When y'all gonna wake up? I'm wrong when I'm pointing out how black folks for the first time are talking about the borders being flooded, how illegal immigration ultimately negatively affects us. I'm wrong. I'm wrong in pointing out how xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia has all of a sudden become bigger issues than racism in this country. I mean, damn. How much proof do you need? Oh, no, no, no. All right, guys, so if you haven't heard, Stephen A. Smith has been receiving a lot of backlash basically for having a difference of opinion, for goodness sake. So Stephen A. was on Fox News um, being interviewed by Sean Hannity, and within that interview, he was pretty much calling out the Democrats. He wasn't necessarily defending Donald Trump. He was giving a different perspective of Donald Trump, because if you follow Stephen A., he obviously isn't a biggest fan of Donald Trump. Then lately, he's been calling out the Democrats with as a whole, like as an establishment. So he's just been receiving a lot of backlash because of that. That, as y'all know and I'll be the first to tell you when you have an opinion that's not the popular opinion within your community all of a sudden you're going to be labeled as a traitor you're going to be labeled as a backstabber me personally I don't care I don't care I don't owe anybody anything I am a follower of Christ my life is for Christ and I live for Christ I don't live for anybody else I don't live for no party affiliation that's why it's easy for me to call out the Democrats that's why it's easy for me to call out the Republican if it's not good policy i'm gonna call it out i don't care if your feelings are hurt my main thing is why are some people's views so fragile so much so that it can't even be challenged like are we literally at that point your views is that fragile you feel that entitled to somebody's beliefs someone's way of thinking so much so it can't even be challenged be for real yeah we're gonna go ahead and go straight into the video to the Stephen a smith show right here over the digital airways of youtube let me move on to some of you annoying asses and just get this out the way and obviously Ooh. i'm talking about <laughs> donald trump i was a guest on fox news's sean hannity show last night to discuss the upcoming election the trial and trump some people weren't happy about what i had to say take a listen but i gotta tell you something as much as people may have been abhorred by Donald Trump's statement weeks ago, talking about how black folks, he's hearing that black folks find him relatable because what he's going through is similar to what black Americans have gone through. He wasn't lying. He was telling the truth. When you see the law, law enforcement, the court system and everything else being exercised against him, it is something that black folks throughout this nation can relate to with some of our historic, iconic figures. We've seen that happen throughout society. So no matter what race, what ethnicity you may emanate from, we relate to you when you're suffering like that because we know we have. And that's what he articulated. Needless to say, people were in a tizzy over that. And why would okay within context over that comment um so i remember not even remember, i said i remember like this was a long time ago this was just this year so within the context of his comments re in regards to that a lot of people took it as stephen a was defending donald trump i don't think stephen a was necessarily defending donald trump i think he was trying to provide a different lens and perspective of where a lot of black americans are coming from it really depends on how you view it so for me personally i feel like this is subjective um but i don't think stephen a was coming out and being donald trump's number one fan and saying oh he's right and this and that third because of this and that like i think he was really coming from a position of just like providing a different perspective because he's saying a lot of black people do relate with Donald Trump and what is going on right now. And another thing is, even if he was Donald Trump's biggest fan, why is that anybody's concern? Like, just me personally, like, I just don't understand it. People who follow me know I'm not Donald Trump's biggest fan, but I'm not about to bully someone out of being his fan. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, why is that your concern? One thing that black folks have to realize, and I'm going to, after I say this, I'm going to play it. Donald Trump, or, Donald Trump or Joe Biden is going to win this election. So putting all your eggs in one basket and putting all your eggs in Joe Biden, what, what is that going to get us? Like, why are we afraid to work with people we don't like? And I'm not even going to say we because I don't know these people in real life. In general, why is there such a bad taste in our mouths to work with people that we disagree with or we don't have the same policies with or the same viewpoints? It's like, how far does that get us? Honestly and truly speaking, how far does that get us? It doesn't. It doesn't get us really far. Like, look look at us now. Like, we're steady complaining about, oh, Joe Biden is not doing this, Joe Biden is not doing that. But you're saying you're going to vote for him. 
how serious do you expect him to take your vote? Like you're you're gonna st stick beside him regardless. So it's just like, let's continue. And why were they in the tizzy over that exactly? Because it's being portrayed and misconstrued that I'm saying that Trump's plight relates to black people. Well, it's easy to take things out of context, mm. which is why I love having my own platform so I can remedy and correct some of the foolhardiness that's put out there. First things first, Sean Hannity asked me the question about Trump gaining traction with the black vote. And how whether it's a couple of points or three points or four points that it could end up tilting the election mm. in his favor that's upcoming this November. Yeah. Yes, he's the presumptive GOP nominee. Yes, he's on trial for a hush money case to a porn star. Yes, he recently lost a civil suit for $454 million, where he had to pay about $175 million or something like that up front, okay? Yes. The man has had four indictments against them, 91 counts against them. Still running though. Still a presumptive deal. That's what people aren't clicking. Like he's going through all of this. He has all this going on, but he's still leading in at least to my knowledge, five major polls. Y'all. Like, I don't understand how the Democrats don't see that and be like, wow, we actually have to strategize policy now. Like, we keep trying to maneuver in feelings. We keep trying to do this, that, and the third. And we're wondering why. Why is he still leading in polls? Why are we still leading in polls? Bro. Donald Trump leading and having all that says more about the Democratic Party than it does about Donald Trump. I'm just going to be honest. All are saying he's a threat to democracy. He's doing this. He's doing that. Well, golly gee, he's still leading in the polls. Like, if he's doing all this and he's leading in the polls, doesn't that say more about you? Like, what you, where you're lacking? Come on, y'all. <laughs> I just don't understand why it's not clicking. Like, why is it not clicking? Be nominee, though. And by the way, as I pointed out, has gained traction and is ahead of the incumbent, President Joe Biden, in at least five polls. Not all of the Literally. polls. But at least five polls have Trump ahead. Now, before I go a bit further, getting into us, us as black people, because we know how we can be now, okay? <laughs> Not all, not some of us, but I'm just talking about some of us from our community. We know how the hell we could be. We're going to have that conversation in just a second. But before I get to that, I love how y'all pick apart me on Hannity. Mm. I was on Cuomo on News Nation an hour earlier. I ain't hearing about point. that. I was on MSNBC at least twice over the last month. I ain't hearing about that. I was on CNN, Abby Phillips, Laura Coates, several times. I ain't hear nothing about that, okay? Oh, Stephen A, uh, uh, contributor to Fox. I'm no contributor to Fox News. I show up on all the networks. I was on Real Time with Bill Maher on HBO. I'm sorry, I ain't hear, I ain't hear nothing about that. I've repeatedly said, I think Trump will cause civil war in this country. I, I can't vote for the brother. Y'all yeah, just going to ignore that. Why am I bringing all of this stuff up? Because the second black folks find somebody from our community that doesn't march 100% lockstep with one another they a sellout they did say that shut the hell up say it again say it again I never thought I'll see the day that I actually agree with Stephen A. Smith not saying not saying he's a person not to agree with but like there's some things he said in the past where I don't agree with but he's not wrong he is not wrong it's like people love black folks as long as you stay in line. What are we doing? Are you scared to call out people within your party? Why are you scared to hold people accountable to their words? Why are you scared to not show up for certain public political figures because they're not doing their job correctly? Like, why are you scared? Like, I genuinely, like, look at me leaning back, getting all comfortable. Like, literally, we are scared to go out of our comfort zone. As a, I'm speaking as a community specifically. We are scared to go out of our comfort zone. I've said this before. The Democratic Party provides a level of comfort that we can't, that it's almost, it's like, it's like that relationship that you know sells you a false dream, but you just continue to go back and back and back, holding on to the potential. That's literally how the black community and the Democratic Party relationship is. Like, why are we so scared to move to the middle and go based on policy? Because you got one, one thing about it, two things for sure. Donald Trump or Joe Biden is winning this election. So putting all your eggs in Joe Biden's basket 
what is that going to do for us? Not even as a community, but as a whole. What what is that what is that going to do for us? Somebody please let me know. Yeah. Insanity doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We as a people, entire like as a whole, we need to stop putting our di our identity in these political parties. We need to move to the middle and we need to go based off policy point blank period the same energy that people call out donald trump oh he's done this he's done that he said this he's done that we can say the same thing about the joe biden so why does joe biden get a pass let me know somebody let me know why does joe ba biden get a pass for the things he said the things he's done even within the system all right then so we see two flawed individuals two individuals who are far from perfect we're human first we 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 are human both of them are flawed both of them are imperfect so why is it such a bad thing for us to put personal aside and look at both of their policies and see what can be the best for the people? That is all that I'm saying. That is all vast majority of a lot of people in the black community is saying too. A lot of people are like starting to realize, yo, making someone feel entitled to my vote isn't doing nothing for me or my family. So at this point, at this point, we're throwing it all away. I'm looking at policy as it should be. Shut the hell up. This is getting ridiculous. Okay? Literally. Trump is winning. Literally. Y'all just gonna stand still? I'm wrong when I sit up there and I say, yo, Democrats, all you got is the 80, so soon to be 82 year old incumbent? You didn't have not anything in the bullpen? I'm wrong for bringing that up? I'm wrong for bringing up why the hell you had Gavin Newsom on Fox News looking like he's running for president. Instead Quick, and then we'll finish it off. Y'all already know how I feel about Gavin Newsom. That man better not get anywhere near that presidential seat. I already know he's going to run for president 2028 or whatever, but good grief. Even the Democrats in California aren't his biggest fan. Yeah, but don't. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I really pray he does not get near that presidential seat. Joe Biden being a president or Kamala Harris being a vice president. I'm wrong for bringing that up. I'm wrong for bringing up when I went off about Kamala Harris, our vice president, our HBCU grad from Howard University, a black woman, highly intelligent, former attorney general in the city of san francisco former attorney general in the state of, of california i was wrong for bringing up how she was wrong to avoid getting into it with then presidential candidate ron desantis the governor of florida when he wanted to debate her on the good parts of slavery i was wrong i was wrong about that i was wrong to say she should have that's a fight she should have embraced when y'all gonna wake up? I'm wrong when I'm pointing out how black folks for the first time are talking about the borders being flooded. How illegal immigration ultimately negatively affects us. I'm wrong. I'm wrong in pointing out how xenophobia, homophobia, transphobia has all of a sudden become bigger issues than racism in this country. I mean, damn. How much proof do you need? When I brought up the economy, they say the economy is good. They say the economy is flourishing. You trying to tell me you black and you don't you disagree with me when I say to us, we don't want to hear about the numbers. Oh, the rate labor participation rate is good. Oh, unemployment is good. Oh, the economy is okay. If gas prices are damn near double what it used to be, if the price of bread, milk, cheese, and every eggs and everything in between is double what it used to be, but we ain't getting raises at work. You trying to tell me I was wrong for bringing that up? You trying to tell me I'm wrong when you sitting up there and you talking about and subjects like immigrants in New York City getting fifty three million dollar prepaid credit cards Ooh. to subsidize their existence in this country, and I'm pointing out how that was never done for black people. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. That's where we really want to go. Hold up. Cuz he ate that. I'm not even going to lie, he ate that. He he makes he makes sense. He makes 
sense. Whether you agree or you don't, you can't deny. He makes valid points. I'm going to say this. Our biggest issue, not even within the black community, just in general, and I see it a lot right now in the left. It's like we're so caught up in the concept of just ride or die cultish mindset. So much so that we just refuse to call out hypocrisy. We refuse to call out the microaggressions. We refuse to call out the contradictions. Because we feel like, oh, if we call that out, then I'm being a traitor to my party. And what? You think when we die and we stand before God, there's going to be two lines, Republicans and Democrats? Be for real. You think when we die and we stand before God, these politicians are going to cut the gates in heaven because they are a politician in this life? Be for real. At the end of the day, we all bleed blood. We all have flesh. Like, who's above the next person? Who is above accountability? Who is above criticism? So I highly, highly, highly suggest stop putting your identity in your party affiliation. Put your, put your identity in Christ. Because that's, that's what helped me. That's what changed me. That's how I really started to grow. I stopped putting my identity in these parties. I put my identity in Jesus Christ. And whatever is not of God, I call out. That's why it's so easy it's so easy for me to call out something that's that's not right you think i'm gonna sit here and defend policies that the left is pushing because just so happened because i'm a registered democrat for now be for real be for real i'll set this once and i say this again even aside from black community people in general you need to maneuver as an independent go based off policy period which policy can do the best not only for you but your family for your state and this country and go from there because what we have in 2024, we have two flawed people, two people who are not perfect, two people who've probably made some mistakes, said some things they shouldn't have said. You have no choice but to go off of policy, like go off of their policy, see what they're offering and don't put your eggs in one basket. Y'all, you have to be willing to work. This goes from the left and the right. You have to be willing to work with people you may not personally like. That is life. How is it that I'm in my 20s? I am Gen Z and I'm having to teach this to people who are twice my age in real life. Like you have to put personal aside. We don't, we get, we get nowhere maneuvering and feelings. I work with people all the time that may not be my cup of tea in the real world, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to work with them. You have to put personal ego and pride aside and look at the ultimate goal. What is the end goal? Who can implement the best policies for the people? Stop making it about the person. And another thing Stephen A pointed out, and then, and then I'm out. Black people, black folks. Anytime someone has a difference of opinion that may not be popular within the vast majority, that doesn't make them a traitor. That doesn't make them a sellout. That goes for the black folks who like to call black Republicans coons. Yeah, I'm not with that. I'm not with that. I may not agree with everything within the Republican Party, but to fix your mouth and call someone a coon because they have a different viewpoint or they see life in a different tunnel vision than you, that shows your lack of maturity. We have to do better. We really have to do better. It is 2024. If you lack the maturity to fully understand and comprehend something called a difference of opinion, then I do not know what to tell you. Like you are the problem at that point. Simple. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you're notified whenever I post a new video. Follow me on my social media. I love y'all all, and I just want to say thank y'all for 10,000 subscribers, y'all. Y'all don't understand all glory to God. Like, the fact that I have 10,000 subscribers, I'm not even going to say I can't believe it because I really can believe it. I'm a hard worker. God has given me so much like opportunity and put me in so many spaces and places that he's really trying to uplift my voice to really bring people together at the end of the day. I truly believe that in my heart. Um, but yeah, I just thank y'all for 10,000 subs. I love y'all all. God bless y'all. This is Uduak connecting people with policy. Toodles. Oh,